All right, so now we're into the re employee retention credit. And the reason that I spent so much time up front on the PPP was because we wanna be able to back the percentage back down to about 60% on the labor side of things. So we can uh, then start using some of the labor that would have been in the uh, used for PPP that got over 60%, we can now begin to use that labor for the employee retention credit. When the PPP came out last year, you were not allowed to have a PPP loan and an employee retention credit that I've abbreviated here, ERC. You couldn't have both, and now you can. And as far as we know, it is retroactive. That means that we can now go back and look at 2020, and we can file to get some of that money as well. It's, that's a gigantic uh, windfall um, for companies. So um, it's also refundable. Uh, if you didn't owe as much payroll tax, in other words, your, your uh, amount of your employee retention um, credit is beyond what you paid in in payroll taxes, you can also get a refund on top of that. So more money. It can be paid in advance of the quarter, taken with each deposit or taken at quarter end filing. We personally will be doing it at the quarter, quarter end filing for our clients um, because we don't want to uh, get into this kind of reconciliation process and what if we make a mistake and um, so on and so forth. So um, they can be used if, uh, if loan forgiveness hasn't been initiated. It's not really clear if you've already got forgiveness on your loan, they have not clarified whether you can go back. And there's, there's two conflicting pieces in the bill. One says, hey, you kind of can. And the other one says, hey, you absolutely can't. So there needs to be some clarification around that. Um, and we would expect that here in the next probably 30 days or so, I would imagine. So I would say if you've, if you've used, you can go ahead and do the, the calculus on it, but if you've already filed for forgiveness, um, it may be a bit of an uphill battle to use the employee retention credit for the last loan. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't use it for the expenses that are subsequent to your uh, period that you had the loan. So let's say your, your, your uh, period expired, your um, usage period expired at the end of September, you'd still have quarter four that you could look at. So I would expect clarification um, of receiving the credit for prior quarters to happen, as I mentioned, in the next month or so. Okay, we have some questions. Okay. Uh, does your accountant and or payroll bookkeeper need to be the one to apply for the IRS re employee retention credit? No, you can do it yourself. You can absolutely do it yourself. Um, it's it's going to take a lot of work to do this. We've already kind of warned our clientele. Um, there's a lot of work because you have to go through employee by employee and evaluate what can be used for PPP, what, what can be used for um, the employee retention credit. So there's a lot of work in this. It's not a snap the fingers. You know, I, it would have been great if you said, hey, you know, we got a million dollar loan. Therefore, um, you know, I, I can back my, if I spent $800,000 on payroll, I could have only needed to spend 600,000. I'm gonna go after that credit for the 200,000. It doesn't work like that. It's employee by employee. So as soon as the employee hits 10,000 bucks, then that is uh, that employees off the board. And I'll clarify here. Okay. And one more, can we apply for wages and benefits for employees who are furloughed for ERC calculation? It depends on the size um, of the organization. So I'm going to take a look at that here. So in 2020, if you had greater than a hundred full-time employees, you can receive the ERC for paying employees for no work. So if you, if, you, if you furloughed them, but you continued to pay them uh, for doing no work and you had more than 100 full-time employees, then um, you can get the ERC for that. If you had less than or equal to 100 full-time employees, which is defined as 30 hours per week, you can receive the credit even if you're paying. And that's where a lot of the um, uh, restaurants are going to be. So you can pay them, but the control group rules apply and that's important. So let's say that you had uh, uh, five restaurants and you had 150 uh, employees on the, among those five restaurants and you had substantial ownership in all of them, that control group um, rule would apply to you. 
um, and kind of kick you out of that less than 100 employees. Now, that's not going to make as big a difference in 2021, but it certainly does for 2020 because that pops you into the uh, greater than uh, 100 full-time employees. So your, your operations were either fully or partially suspended due to, due to COVID-19 or greater than or equal to 50% reduction in sales for any quarter until sales recover to 80% of 2019 same quarter. So most companies are going to get this for quarter two. So they had a gigantic fall off in quarter two because everything closed up. And you get to take that credit up until you, in the, the quarter past when you recovered it to 80% of your sales. So let's say that quarter two, you're down 55%. You obviously qualify for quarter two. You also get quarter three because quarter three, it doesn't end until the end of the period in which, you're, in which you hit 80% of your sales of prior year. So if you hit, let's say you're down 15%, you hit 85% of your sales in quarter three, at that point, you would get quarter two and quarter three and you'd be done until you had a, a major reduction again. So um, that's a little bit of what you have to remember around that. I know when I first read, I was a little bit confused, but you get the quarter in which it recovers to 80% or more, and then you don't get the quarter after that. So, um, most companies, I think, will at least get quarter two and quarter three for the employee retention credit um, for 2020. If you have less than 100 employees and you had uh, or 100 or 101 employees, I should say, um, you'll get that money. So quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four, it's applicable in 2020. Quarter one is just that little stub of 313 through 331. And back up to the operations fully or partially suspended, um, you would get the employee retention credit for that time period only. So if you popped right back up in um, sale, let's say, that, let's say that you had a reasonably decent um, quarter one as most restaurants did, we were off to a really strong start this year. And then uh, everything kind of fell apart. And let's say that you had to close uh, from 313 to 331 due to a government mandate, um, you could take your employer retention credit for that time. So these, these rules are fairly intertwined and, and they look simplistic, but they're, they're pretty complicated. So the 2020 credit is 50% of the first 10,000 or $5,000 of wages plus healthcare per employee for the year. Now that's going to change in 2021, but in 2020, it was the whole year. You could only get up to $5,000 of credit for the whole year. So next year, it's a little bit different or the 2021 is different. And you have to remember that the bottom point here is critical because it can really throw a wrench into things. There's no double dipping. So no double dipping with PPP costs or other credits such as the WOTC or the FFCRA or any other programs that are out there. You have to make sure that you don't double count those payroll costs. Um, if there was an audit, they may, they may catch you, they may not, but um, just make sure you're not double dipping just to stay above board. In 2021, the game changes. So this is in effect until 6.30 or first two quarters of the year. So if you get quarter one, you'll get quarter two. Remember, it's up until you recover to 80%. So less than or equal to 500 full-time employees. And those are people that are 30 hours per week. So this is a little bit of a different calculation. It's just counting your full-time employees, um, not part-time that use less than, or you know, a lot of servers work 28 hours a week. Those people wouldn't count. So it's not um, you know, the Obamacare type of calculation. This is people that are 30 hours a week or more. Yeah, same for 2020 as well. Same deal where your operations are fully or partially suspended due to COVID-19 or greater than or equal to a 20% reduction for either uh, quarter versus 2019, same quarter, not 2020, most people's sales were down. Um, if, if you, uh, you can also use the prior um, quarter four as well. 
um, to roll in if you were down like 23% or something in quarter four, a lot of people were, but I don't think we're going to have much of a problem for most people of being down 20% for quarter one. So this is available for quarter one and quarter two, each quarter independently. And this is really important because last year, if you recall what I said, you went, it was $5,000 for the entire year. This year in 2021, it's each quarter independently. So each quarter independently. So in quarter one, if you wanted to ad get advance money, you could use quarter four versus quarter four of 19. Uh, that's allowable for quarter one um, for the calculation of the 20%. But most people are gonna wait until after the quarter is over to compute their percentage of being down. So the credit in 2021 is 70% of the first $10,000 per employee per quarter. Recall last year was 50% for the year up to $5,000. So we've gone from $5,000 worth of credit to $14,000 with all of those other expenses that, that have been given, the employee expenses, the supplier expenses, all those additional expenses that they added into the bill. Um, this is pretty exciting because we can get up to $14,000. Uh, again, no double dipping, no double dipping. All right, questions? We have one last question, I believe about the PPP. Um, so if, can you use this money to reimburse your business for food and beer losses? Food and beer losses. So the, uh, the expenses, you would have already incurred those provided you took an inventory, you would have uh, already incurred those. Um, I think it's expenses that you have rather than expenses that you had. But if you are an accrual base um, company, I think that, that those are expenses in the current period. They're perishable, you lost them. Beverage is an interesting one because beer is, is remember these, these um, these expenses need to be perishable goods. So beer is perishable. Wine can be perishable. Liquor, probably not perishable. That's the one thing that we don't have clarity, clarity around. But I think that, you know, beer certainly is perishable. Um, and wine, you could argue, is perishable. Um, so food, definitely perishable. All right, put out, put out a shout out for the last couple of questions in these last couple of minutes. Uh, Rick, I think one of the questions uh, just people are thinking, um, uh, what's their window of opportunity for, uh, as a business owner to start taking advantage of this? When do you start seeing the window closing? Uh, if it's after March, after February, what is, uh, what is your time frame on these things for your clients? For the, for the employee retention credit? Yes. We're working on it now for last year. And then we'll, we'll work on it in April for quarter one and July for quarter two. So you, basically you wanna kind of get it in there and, and amend um, or in, on the 941, you'll be able to make some adjustments for this year. Last year um, is a little trickier. Um, you may have to go back and do a 941X, but um, it's going to be a little trickier for last year. And they're still, the language is unclear whether you're going to be able to have this kind of cumulative um, adjustment. So wait for more clarity on that as, as one of the authors of uh, some of the articles that I was researching said, you know, it's really clear as mud again. So, and, and the guy said, I've read, the, read it over and over and over to a ridiculous amount and I can't figure it out. So we should see clarity on this uh, cumulative credit, um, I would think here in the next 30 days, because there's gonna be a lot of pressure around this. So you can also, one of the things I didn't talk about because we're not doing it, if you're really in need of money, you can fill out form 7200 and get an advance on this. So you could take advances and then reconcile it at the end of the quarter. Um, so if you really need money, you can, you can just, you know, get an advance. So um, you file that form and, and you should have your money in a couple of weeks. That's great to know. 
Uh, we had the, one of the questions ask about the availability of this webinar. Uh, this will be um, uh, published on the hub.wahospitality.org website. Uh, uh, Lisa, you'll be putting that up on there uh, by the end of the day today. So if you go up there, we're going to have uh, Rick's PowerPoint presentation that you can download, as well as the video up there that you could watch uh, watch again to get further clarification. Thank you. Yeah, and I would really I would really encourage everybody to write your questions in, even if we don't answer them on this. Uh, get a hold of Lex or Lisa or me, um, and write your questions in because we have spent an enormous amount of research on this. Um, even though it's it's a relatively new uh, announcement this year, we spent a ton of time on this. We we used a lot of legal, uh, we used a lot of national CPA firms. We used a lot of our own brain power. We read through the all the research that's been done by the experts. We've read the bills ourselves uh, and the um, um, interim final rules around this. So um, I'd really encourage you to write in on this because we, we have a lot of horsepower that we put behind this. And I think we can help clarify things because things don't always come over um, to a broad audience as specifically as you would need them for your own individual business. Um, it's a fairly complicated interweb of things that you need to do to pull this off correctly, but it can be extremely lucrative. You know, we, we looked at, um, we're developing some, some software with our apparel company and we looked at one particular client, the credit was four hundred thousand dollars because it's a large, it's a large company, a large restaurant. So this is not a, a, a um, an insignificant amount of money, and even if it's ten thousand bucks, it's ten thousand bucks. You can do something with it. So this is the most for me. This was the most exciting piece of this next round of PPP: the clarity around uh, supplier expenses and having this uh, employer retention credit be retroactive to 2020 was a game changer for a lot of people. So I know it's really hard and some people are thinking about pulling the plug right now, but there's a lot of money out there right now, the PPP money and then this employer retention credit sitting right behind it, various grant programs. And then, um, you know, what I firmly believe will be another round of, of stimulus, you know, first we get the rescue, then we have the recovery can't recover without any money. So I think that, that we will see more stimulus in 2021. Um, so you really need to kind of bridge that gap. I was saying you have to get to, to uh, spring. Um, I think spring starts helping, but certainly when we get into to summer, uh, if we get another round of stimulus and we maximize this one, uh, I think a lot of people are gonna be in relatively decent shape uh, going into summer. And then we're gonna be fighting for staff again and arguing over cooks and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, we look forward to those, uh, those days again. Does the ERC have to be used for all pay periods in the quarter or can it be used for individual pay periods in succession? And what happens if you get PPP money in the middle of a quarter? Um, I th the two are separate. I think the, the PPP is separate. You just can't use the funds for, for two separate things. Um, but they're really, it's really a, a quarterly um, calculation. It's not a month by month calculation. So in other words, you can't be down 50% uh, and say, well, I, I get it for that month. Um, it's a quarterly calculation. And that's why we are waiting until the end of the quarter because we could see those whipsaws between and something could happen. The sun could actually come out and be really great. And um, you know, March comes out and blows it away and it over, over well, overwhelms, you know, uh, period one, period two, and we don't fall into that um, ERC. So it's really a quarterly calculation. Now, if you think you're going to be down for the quarter, you can certainly use the credit each time on your payroll. So um, there's there's some benefit to doing that. I think it would be better most to, to get to the end of the quarter and calculate everything uh, to avoid too much brain damage. When is the expiration date to use second draw PPP funds? So it's going to be eight or 24 weeks. Um, there's no uh, alternative uh, coverage period like there was last time. So you have eight to 24 weeks from when the loan is funded. And that's why we want to put that, push that funding date out as far as possible. Because if we can stretch it out over the 24 weeks and make it work, and we can take, you know, um, 
the first two months of the year, basically the duds other than Valentine's Day, January, February, and then we can start using that money in March when we have uh, start recovering somewhat, uh, that gets us squarely into summer to use that money. So ERC in 2021 also has a hundred employee hurdle for calculation? Nope, it's 500. They changed it to 500 full-time employees. And that was huge because if you've got a small company, let's say you have, you know, four or five restaurants or three to five restaurants and you've got, you know, 120 employees, which we see a lot of, um, they were kind of penalized by that. But now in 2021, it's less than or equal to 500 full-time employees. Remember that full-time employees, 30 hours per week, it's not dump them all in a bucket and divide them by 30 and see how many FTEs you have. It's full-time employees. It's not that overall add them all together and divide it by the number of bodies. It's full time employees, people that work 30 hours per week or more, only them, not 28, not 20, not part time people. Um, those don't add, you know, they don't calculate as a half. They're, they're people that are 30 hours a week or more. And you mentioned a form a little while ago to get the advance. What was the name of that? Uh, it's Form 7200. So if, I think if you do a Google on Form 7200, it should come up with some uh, form. I've only looked at it once. And if we were holding taxes by using the ER Social Security deferment in 2020, can we amend our 941 to restate this as the ERC instead of a deferment? Ah, oh, boy. As long as you're not double dipping, I believe you probably can. There's long, there's just no double dipping. That's what you have to um, avoid. Thank you so much, Rick. We appreciate this. Uh, once again, we are going to record this and it will be up online on our website at the hub.hospitality.org. 